pastors and youth leaders. If we change the words we speak to our young people, we can transform the environment. That they yeah. Our young people are not the church of tomorrow. They are the church of right now. I stood in front of my congregation years ago and I got together with my leadership and I made this plea. Please don't let my church get old. Don't, li listen, don't let my church get old. It doesn't mean we don't value the elderly. It doesn't mean that we don't value the mature. It doesn't mean that we're not valuing the, the, that generation that, that paid the price. What it means is that we have to be willing to make changes and create an environment that our young people can grow up in. I was raised in a church that spoke a language I didn't understand. And all I got told was sit down, be, just sit there, pay attention and listen. They didn't want my opinions. They didn't want what I brought to the table. It was, they didn't want me until I was shined up and pretty. After I went to Bible college, started ministry, and the ministry started growing, then they said, would you come back and be our youth pastor? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not going back to Egypt. shout or a declaration they were words of praise Amen. Amen. and as the crowd of people are moving Jesus the son of God stops Amen. and he says someone knows who I am yes. oh you missed that somebody knows who I am everyone else was saying teacher just stop, fuck, what would you, would you stop, could you, could you explain this, could you heal this, could you do this, but in the background he hears, Jesus, son of David, Amen. and Jesus stops in his tracks, ah, yes. somebody here knows who I am, mm. yeah. it's powerful, honey. Yeah, man. I'm here to tell you that there is a praise that you release, yes. that in a crowded room like this, God will stop. Amen. When you recognize who he is. Hallelujah. He will stop what he's doing and come right next to you and say, what's up, son? What you need? Yeah. I want you to notice what happens here. Jesus stops and says, bring him to me. Now, I love Jesus. I think Jesus is pretty messed up. <laughs> They're in a crowd of people. And the man's blind. And instead of Jesus going to the blind man, he tells the blind man to come to him. <laughs> right? you know, there's some things that God may ask you to do that just might not make sense. Don't get offended. We get so offended. Well, if Jesus really loved me, he would come over to where I'm at. <laughs> Why you're still blind? If you really want to get healed, if you really want to get healed, you'll, you'll obey the instructions. And so many of us are still in our blindness and in our bondage. Because you don't want to do what God's telling you to do. Amen. You want God on your terms. It don't work that way. <laughs> Jesus says, bring him to me. And I want you to know what he does. God stops and he gets up from his place. This is 
his place. That's right. This is a place that he's taking care of. This is his, his his special place. This is where he makes money. This is his business. But he does something. Listen, according to science and physics, two objects cannot occupy the same place. You cannot receive something from God until you let go of something. Oh, you're going to get it in a moment. The Bible says this, that, that Jesus calls him and he gets up and he takes off his garment. Not going to end up in his underwear. <laughs> But he takes off his garment. And the Bible says that he cast it aside. Why, why would he do that? My daughter died of leukemia. After a three year battle of leukemia, while I'm planning a church, while I'm doing the Lord's work, where I believe for healing for her body, where I believe God to restore her, my, my, my baby on her eighth birthday, instead of blowing up blooms, instead of wrapping gifts, I'm officiating her funeral. You see a man that is preaching boldly. You see a man that you think has it all together. But I got my permit. I got a right to be bitter at God. I got a right to walk away. I got a right to say I give up. She was my baby. She was my love. My oldest daughter doesn't want anything to do with me. From the time she was born. The moment mom walked out of the room she would cry. When she was a baby and mom walked out, she would cry. When she was three years old and mom walked out, she cried. All she's ever wanted is mom. But the second one, Jessica, she was my baby. I told her when she was born, you know what, I'm not having another number one. I want a kid that loves me. And so from the moment she was born, she was mine. 
And we spent time together. She, we had Jesse Day every Monday. And her and I hung out. And she would just, she, she would just hold my face. And I, I would watch TV or a game and she would try to get my face and get me to pay attention. I would ignore her on purpose. Because I love when she sought my attention. She would grab her little fingers and put them on my face and say, Daddy, Daddy, Tito, Daddy, Tito. And, and Tito is, uh, is her way of saying besito, which is sp Spanish for kiss. Mm. She would say, kiss, Daddy, Tito, Daddy, Tito. And I, I would try to look around her just to get her to keep pulling my face. <laughs> And then she would kiss me on my nose and say, I love you right there. I love you right there. I love you right there. And then I would return the favor to her and I would hold her. And I would kiss her and say, baby, I love you right there. I love you right there. I got a permit. Every one of you in this place has a permit. Amen. You all have a permit. But Bartimaeus knew something. I can't get something from God until I let go of my permit to beg. Church, it's time that we as a minority stop. And I say we. Not you. We. Yes. I'm part of you. Amen. It's time that we stop living off of pity and start living off the of promises. Amen. It's time that we stop living off the handouts of people walking by. Wanting people to feel sorry for us. Wanting people to give to us. It's time that we let go of the permit to beg and say, I got a right to be blessed. I got a right to see. I got my vision back. I'm sorry. Someone can help me on the keyboard. Bartimaeus comes face to face with Jesus. This is where I close. I apologize for taking so long. It's okay. Comes face to face with Jesus. And Jesus asks him a question, Pastor. He says, What do you want me to do for you? Really? What do you want me to do for you? I'm blind. But Jesus doesn't jump to assumptions. He wants to hear from Bartimaeus, what do you want from me? I'm convinced that it's not that God doesn't want to bless us. It's just the fact that we don't know what we want from him. Say it again, Pastor. Say it again. What do you want me to do for you, Bartimaeus? Notice Jesus doesn't kind of call him blind. He says, what do you want from me? It's time to let go of your permit to complain, to murmur. It's time to let it go. Everyone say, let it go. Let it go. Jesus looks at Bartimaeus and says, what do you want me to do for you? Bartimaeus has his genie in a bottle right now. One wish. What do I want? Well, you know, Jesus, I want a chariot with 24s on it with a bumping stereo. I want some fine ladies to lead me around. I want a new wardrobe. I want a new house. He could have asked for anything. But Bartimaeus understood, I have one need. One thing I want, Jesus. I want to see. I want to see. Tonight, or this 
this morning. What do you want from Jesus? This message is for every single one of you, young and old. Amen. Pastor, what is the one thing you want God to do? What's the one thing, woman of God, you want God to do? Young person, what's the one thing you need from God right now? I promise you that if you would let it go, let go of your permit to beg, that you'll receive what you need from God this morning. So with heads bowed and eyes closed, you're here right now and you would simply say this. <coughs> Pastor Dan, I have to let go of my permit right now. I've been carrying this grudge way too long. I've been carrying this hurt way too long. Right where you are, on the count of three, I'm going to ask you to lift your head. Ready? One, two, three. Right where you are. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Wow. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. God bless you in the back as well. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You can put your hands down. No longer living by pity. I'm going to live by promise. Second, you're here right now and you realize... I want you to think, what's the one thing I need from God right now? It might be to heal your marriage. It might be to strengthen your walk with God. It might be to get out of debt. It might be to, to, to break that sin that's been, uh, in, in, that you've been in bondage to for years. One thing, not a bunch of things, one thing. What's the one thing you need from God? And when you figure out what that one thing is, I want you to stand to your feet right where you are. One thing. God bless you. 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 One thing. One thing. Now I'm going to ask for those that lifted your hand on the first call to join those that are standing right now. Stand to your feet right where you are. Those of you that raised your hands on the first call. We all have a permit. And no one would blame you for turning your back on God. My mom told me when it happened, she was so afraid that I would leave ministry after my daughter died. And I told my mom, there's no way I would leave God. Amen. I can't. Because heaven now becomes so much realer to me. Amen. If I have any hope of seeing her again, I have to serve God. And I tell you, I'm so excited to see Jesus, but I can't wait to see my baby girl. Amen. Can't wait to hold her again. And tell her, I love you right here. I love you right there. I love you right there. No more pity. Let's live by promise. These altars are open. I'm going to ask you to make your way out of your seats. Let's find a place to spend some time before God for a moment. As the worship team leads us in a song this morning.
I declare healing right now over every heart, over every memory, God. I break right now, my God, the unspoken hell that they went through. I speak now, my God, breakthrough over their lives of the someone that hurt, that someone that violated them. Lord, I thank you now, my God, that, Lord, you're able to restore and put back together what someone else has damaged. You're not a God that tears apart. You're a God that restores. And I speak healing right now, healing of that memory, my God, for that family that has gone through a divorce, my God, that child that is going through that, that loss of a loved one, the loss of a father 
father or mother. Lord God, for that person, my God, that has been hurt by someone, I speak healing over you now. But God, today, corporately, we say this. We let it go. Because I can't receive something from you when I'm holding on tight to yesterday. Let me let go of yesterday so I can receive my healing today. So right now, you got the thing that you want God to do for you? You got it? I want you to picture Jesus standing in front of you right now. Come on, just see Jesus standing in front of you. And He's telling you right now, what do you want me to do for you? Would you tell Him right now? Just speak it. Come on, tell Him. Father, right now, my God, this is what I need from you. This is what I want. I know you can do it, God. I know you can take away this lust. I know you can take away this addiction. I know, God, you can take away this anger. I know, God, that you can give me a vision. I know, God, that you can give me the ability to do a new thing, that you can bless this ministry, that you can take us to new levels. God, I know that you're able to do this. I place my trust in you, God, now. Come on, church, call out to him. Son of David, son of David, I know who you are. Through my praise, I'm going to transform this atmosphere. I'm going to transform this atmosphere right now into a place, into a place that I know that you can do something. I know that you can transform this place. That you have something that you want to do. That something that you can transform in my life. Transform this church into the throne room of heaven, I pray. In Jesus' name.
for you. For your time. Because I know there are still some that he's been praying for now. And I don't want to stop what God is doing, but I just want to say something about this weekend. We planned and we set up our program and we, we ask God to take us where He wants us. And there was something happened on yesterday morning. That God showed up. There were about maybe 15, 20 people up here in the front and they were crying and praying unto God and, and we can't stop them. And all of a sudden as we praise and worship God and every, you know, more people joining them and they pray and, and uh, seek the presence of God here and we end up finishing our program right there in the presence of God. Amen. What I'm saying, church, is that there is things that we need to let go because we want God. Then I told them, you know what, we move our program aside and let God do His thing. Amen. And I thank God this morning because he's still doing what he wanted to do in this in this camp. And I just want to allow him that he may finish his work in your life, young people. And I think even to this moment, it's not only the young people, but for us parents. I think for us pastors, for us leaders, uh, that God is really speaking into our hearts that we are to wake up and notice that there are things that we need to let go if we want to be connected with God. Amen. If we want it to be restored, if we want it to be revived in the work of the Lord, there are things that we need to let go. And I thank God this weekend that God did it His way. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen.